I'm Reverend Kimberly, your Minister of Religious Education, and the story I have for you today is called Wanda's Roses by Pat Bryson. One morning in May, on the way home from school, Wanda noticed a bush growing in an empty lot. It was about two feet tall, and Wanda was surprised she hadn't noticed it before. But there it was, bare and thorny, and Wanda, who loved beautiful things, felt her heart beat faster. A rose bush, she said, my own rose bush. Now the rose bush didn't really belong to Wanda, but since the empty lot didn't seem to belong to anyone, Wanda decided she would take care of it. All during school, she thought about her rose bush. She drew pictures of it in art. In library, she borrowed books about roses. And in science, she asked questions about how to grow it. After school, she rushed to the rose bush. It was still bare and thorny. Maybe it needs more sun, thought Wanda. So she began dragging the trash away from it. Now, Miss Turner, who was on her way from school, stopped to help her with the broken chair. Cleaning up the neighborhood, Wanda, she asked. Oh no, not cleaning. I'm helping my rose bush to get more sun so it will bloom. Your rose bush, said Miss Turner. Where is your rose bush? Oh, there, she said, pointing to the bare, thorny bush. Oh, Wanda, I'm not so sure. It's a rose bush. Oh, sure it is, said Wanda. Well, good luck with it, Wanda. And as she walked away, Miss Turner thought to herself, if that's a rose bush, I'm the Queen of England. The next day, she rushed to a rose bush after school. Maybe it needs more air. So she began taking even more trash to the curb. Once I get the trash out, there'll be plenty of good air. Mr. Claudel was on his way home and asked, cleaning up the neighborhood, Wanda. Not just cleaning, I'm getting rid of the trash so my rose bush will have more air. A rose bush, here? So Wanda showed him the rose bush. Well, I don't know much about gardening, but I don't think that's a rose bush. Sure it is, said Wanda. In a few weeks, this lot will be filled with the sweetest smelling flowers you ever saw. And she thanked Mr. Claudel for his help. That's a rose bush, he thought to himself. Well, then I'm the king of France. Every day after school, that week and the next, Wanda worked to clean up the lot. Miss Giamani, who lived in the apartment next door, gave Wanda trash bags. You've done a great job cleaning up, Miss Giovanni told her. Oh, I'm not just cleaning. I'm getting rid of the trash for my rose bush. Where's your rose bush, said Miss Giamani. So Wanda showed her. Oh, Wanda. That's not a rose bush. Oh, but it is. And in a few weeks, this lot will be filled with the most beautiful roses you've ever seen. Don't worry, Miss Giamani. I won't be disappointed. Miss Giamani sighed. The next week, when the rose bush still wasn't blooming, Wanda went to the library. I need some books about getting roses to bloom, she told Miss Jones' librarian. Oh, do you have a rose bush, Wanda? Yes, but it doesn't have any flowers yet. I know it has enough sun and fresh air. Does it have water? Asked Miss Jones. Oh, of course, I will need water to make it bloom. So that afternoon, she rushed to the rose bush and she looked at the dry ground and smiled. Don't worry, little bush, I'll get you water. She went to the butcher shop across the street. Mr. Sanchez, would you please give me some water for my rose bush? A rose bush? Is that what I see you taking care of? Oh, yes but it can't bloom because it needs water. Mr. Sanchez gave her some water in a plastic bucket. I really do hope it's a rose bush, Wanda. You'll see, in a few weeks, whole lot will be full of roses. As Wanda carried the water to her rose bush, Mr. Sanchez muttered, in a few weeks, that thorn bush will still be a thorn bush. But every day, Wanda ran to her rose bush, and every day it was still bare and thorny. Mr. Claudel checked on it as way home from work, Miss Turner on her way to the butcher shop, Miss Giomani from her window, Miss Wanda from the library asked if there were any roses yet. And every day when Wanda went to the butcher shop for water, Mr. Sanchez would say, are there any roses yet? And to each person, Wanda would just answer the same thing. Just you wait. Pretty soon, whole lot will be filled with roses. One day in June, Wanda looked at the thorny bush and said, well, if my roses won't give me, if my rose bush won't give me roses, I'll give roses to my rose bush. 
When she saw Mr. Turner and Mr. Claudel, Miss Giamani, Miss Jones, and Miss Sanchez, she gave them an invitation that said, please come for tea and muffins in Wanda's Rose Garden Saturday morning at nine o'clock. Oh dear, said Miss Turner, is she still expecting roses? Oh no, said Mr. Claudel. Oh my, said Miss Giamani. Oh darn, said Mr. Sanchez, there must be something I can do. Oh good, said Miss Jones, who had only heard about the rose bush and hadn't seen it for herself. I'll bring the muffins. The night before the party, everyone was busy, and in the morning, everyone was surprised to see Wanda's rose bush covered with roses, paper roses, that Wanda had made herself and carefully tied to each thorny branch. But more surprising yet was everyone who came to the party had brought along a rose bush to plant near Wanda's except Miss Jones, who brought the muffins. After they'd eaten the muffins and drank their tea, they all got busy planting rose bushes. Mr. Claudel and Mr. Turner dug the holes. Miss Giamani held the bushes in place, while Wanda and Miss Jones filled in around the roots with soil. And Mr. Sanchez brought water from his shop. When the work was finished, Mr. Claudel said, Wanda, this is going to be a rose garden fit for a king. Or a queen, said Miss Turner. Wanda and the others smiled. And later that summer, the whole lot was filled with the biggest, most beautiful, sweetest smelling roses that anyone had ever seen, just as Wanda said it would be. The end. <laughs>